this week has been a bit of a problematic week and I haven't been able to film anything just because there have been so many problems and they would have been good to share but the things that went wrong I couldn't really share it was to do with customers and it would have been embarrassing for the customer I don't think it was appropriate so I haven't filmed this week it has been a hell of a week um but I had filmed something a little while ago um about inside the blower I filmed this quite a few months ago and I just haven't had time to put it together so I'm gonna put that together and show you inside the blower trailer this was an occasion when I had a tailboard tip so I thought it was an ideal opportunity to film inside if you've watched quite a few of my videos you will know that I pull an array of different blower trailers the doors that can separate the loads when necessary have little hatchways. They can be a little bit temperamental sometimes because of the weight of the loads that they carry. This particular trailer has two doors which creates three compartments. You could have more or less doors depending on the work that you're doing. I'm also going to give it a sweep out while I'm in here. I've just tipped a product called Rape Mill which is a byproduct of extracting the oil from oilseed rape and this product can be quite sticky at times and it's quite often fed to farm animals. This is the second door that I'm opening here and as you can see there is quite a bit stuck up the front. This trailer will only carry natural products like animal feed and will not carry aggregates like my standard bulker trailer. If it's a bit tight for me getting through these doors I do wonder how other people cope. Sweeping out can also be a bit of a challenge because you have to sweep the remaining load under these heavy doors. And because we only carry things like animal feeds, the floor can be very slippery, which is a good thing for tipping because it means the load slips out much more easily, but it's not so good for sweeping out. As I finish with each compartment, I put all the doors back together to prevent them from bending out of shape whilst I'm traveling. These trailers also need to be washed out every six weeks, but I'm feeling like this trailer needs it before it's six weeks. So I lock the doors back in place and then I take it back to the yard to be washed out. As the company I am working for this week don't need the blower again until tomorrow. And although the trailer is now really clean, I am not. Overnight I left everything open so that it could all dry out, as all my hard work would have been undone if I put feed on top of a wet trailer as it would all have stuck to the side and I would have had to have done it again. I'm really pleased with how clean this trailer is looking now. And it's all completely dry, which is good news. This means I can close everything up and I'm ready for a day's blow-in. Also, I will point out that this door at the front of the trailer is slightly shorter. This is because it's on the part of the trailer that steps up at the front. So unlike the other door that can be moved, this one cannot as it is too short. On other videos, you would have seen me shunting the truck forwards to make sure the door fell forwards, but today I can push it forwards myself. Now I just need to close all the doors up to go and get my first load with a nice, clean, shiny trailer. And I do exactly the same once I've climbed through the second door on the trailer. I push it forwards into place so that it's ready to be locked in, and then I close the door. On previous videos, you would have seen me locking the doors like this, which operates these poles under the trailer, which when moved, puts these spikes into the trailer and locks the doors into place like so, which prevents them from moving. And even though I only have two doors in this trailer, I could have many more. In fact, this particular trailer will hold up to six. And obviously, if I had more of these heavy doors in the trailer, that would directly affect the weight that I could carry on this trailer legally. The doors inside can also be moved internally, to suit the load that you're carrying. You can unclip these bolts and slide it throughout the trailer. This can be done on your own, but as the trailers get older, it's more than likely gonna be a two person job. And there is also spikes on the floor so that when they are moved, they can be locked into place. Shortly after washing out, I do have another tailboard tip. And when the trailer is right up in the air, you can see from inside how the doors move. They hang down pretty much like the tailboard, allowing the load to slide down through. And it's also nice to see that the floor is still sparkling. The only way to get the last little bit off is by blowing it off. So I set everything up to blow the last little bit off that's left in the tray. And I operate the controls as I would normally. So the auger is the bit that pushes everything into the middle and helps direct the load when needed. For some loads it's needed all the way through and others just at the end. At the middle of the auger is a feeder and you can change that into two different directions. This pole at the back is a breather pipe and must be kept clear at the top at all times. And that is your tour of Inside the Blower Trailer. I hope you've enjoyed it and as always, thank you for watching.